hair transplant is not a perfect science nor can a hair transplant replicate nature but still in spite of the challenges generally speaking people seeking a hair transplant are usually happy with the results but on the other hand a hair transplant for the crown area is mired by myths shortcomings and mismatched expectations today i discuss three types of crowns that come to a hair transplant surgeon for restoration and i will discuss my approach with these three typical crown areas seeking a hair restoration surgery so be there hold on before we discuss the crown area and its restoration through hair transplant surgery it will be pertinent for you all to have a basic introduction firstly through these videos an entire playlist on crown hair restoration compiled by me in my youtube channel the links are also given in the description below so as some of you already know crown area is a delicate issue in hair transplant surgery an issue which often leads to dissatisfaction if the patient's expectations are not watered down if they were irrational or if a proper assessment has not been made when you are high on dht but low on grafts and low on commitment to continue medical treatment after hair restoration surgery and you have not spent adequate time with the doctor to understand the nuances of hair restoration surgery and of hair loss treatment frustration and dismay are likely to follow as the result of hair transplant unfolds itself the biggest challenge in a hair restoration for the crown area is the paucity scarcity of grafts in higher grades of baldness to cover such a large area and this becomes more important in patients who are young with visible signs of extensive grades of baldness with a strong family history for a responsible and ethical hair transplant surgeon aiming to achieve a full density in the crown area in such circumstances is simply unrealistic a herculean effort the fact of the matter is that the crown area in such cases due to its size requires a humongous amount of grafts sometimes as much as 5000 grafts if it has to meet the same density the same expectations that a patient expects for the hairline and you know that even the hairline is just 50% of natural density so when we are giving only 50% of density to the hairline in hair transplant even in the best of cases but we give half the density to the crown area so you can well imagine the dissatisfaction that the patient undergoes after the result comes in when he has extensive grades of baldness and i have explained this fact in numerous videos on my youtube channel a link to which is in the description box below and here's where math comes into play if you have a mathematical background if you have a scientific background most of us have studied maths till the 12th grade you will understand that if we calculate the area of the entire scalp which is given in this video also and we know that beyond 3500 to 4000 grafts cannot be harvested from the scalp donor and about a similar number from the body areas and if we have to give a modest density of even 40 grafts per centimeter square you can well understand through your calculations that this is well nigh impossible to give 40 centimeter square density throughout the scalp in a person suffering from grade 5 or grade 6 baldness by the time we reach the crown the area line, after planting grafts along the hairline in the mid scalp with high density in most cases we have run out of grafts even a conservative approach focusing on blending and strategic graft placement still requires a hefty amount of grafts given the finite number of grafts in the scalp donor exceeding 3500 to 4000 at the most from the permanent zone can place the patient at serious risk of depleting the scalp donor the donor reserves in the body and leaving them vulnerable to future hair loss without the ability to correct it because most of the grafts when you over harvesting would have already been recruited not catering for future hair loss besides this if we over harvest if we do not maintain the ratio of 1 is to 5 during harvesting this can cause serious shock loss and visible patchiness unesthetic look of the scalp donor in other words the scalp donor can only give so much without being over harvested if a great amount of grafts are available in a single session they will have to come from body donor sites chief of which is the beard donor from the shadow area like in this patient which i am showcasing
cases, even higher densities in the crown area can be given. We can achieve up to 65 grafts per centimeter square in such areas in which there is evidence that the patient's baldness is not progressing too much and the hairline is intact. This gentleman had an abundance of grafts available and as a result, his crown restoration has a happier ending. After his initial hair transplant about 10 years back, he returned for some filling, which in a case of grade 5 or grade 6, a hair transplant surgeon would laugh at. But he can afford that because his donor area is still rich in resources. Achieving a high density is an attainable goal. But in patients with higher grades of baldness, meager donor supply both in the scalp donor and the beard donor, like in this patient, covering the crown remains a pipe dream. In such patients, efforts should be limited to covering the hairline, the temple points, the mid-scalp to some extent. And for the crown area, if he desires coverage, he should be recommended a hair piece. Increasingly, more and more patients with grade 5, grade 6, grade 7 with poor donor supply are correcting the hairline because the hairline of a hair piece is a giveaway. They do the hairline through hair restoration surgery and place a hair piece behind. There are a lot of Indian celebrities who do this and it gives a completely natural appearance, a head full of hair, something which is quite satisfying, which a hair transplant alone will never achieve. And then there are patients with such weak scalp donors and body donor. They are just not candidates for hair transplant surgery. A hair transplant surgeon should not touch them with a barge pole. Yet the moral of the story remains the graft supply is the key limiting factor in hair restoration surgery. While patients may long for a full, youthful crown, reality dictates a more measured approach, particularly in those with limited donor areas, higher grades of baldness, strong family history of extensive baldness. For many patients, managing their expectations is crucial. Explaining to them the nuances of hair transplant done for the crown area and extensive grades of baldness will go a long way in watering down their unrealistic expectations. The focus in such patients should shift from the crown to the more visible hairline and mid-scalp areas, making the most of the grafts available and ensuring long-term sustainability. For those with abundant donor supply, the journey is smoother. But for the others with extensive grades of baldness, achieving a king's crown will require more patience realistic goals and sometimes accepting the fact that even a partial restoration is a blessing. For those who want to do more research on crown restoration before the hair transplant surgery, please go to the description box below and a whole lot of videos on crown restoration will greet you. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Your encouragement keeps the channel going. Have a nice day and God bless you.